Hello again and let's do a quick review of meiosis. Again, meiosis is part of the continuity of life. So meiosis is a process of cell division different from mitosis in that the meiosis will produce gametes or reproductive cells that will contain half, half of the genetic information as in cells of the organism. Now gametes are reproductive cells. The male gamete is called sperm. The female gamete is an ova or ovum, egg. In each case, in the human, the sperm is going to end up with 23 chromosomes. The female egg is going to end up with 23 chromosomes. And it is the combination of each of these uh, gametes with 23 chromosomes that give us our 46 chromosomes that each human will have. Now, we need to understand some terminology here, and that includes the words diploid and monoploid. Diploid is the normal number of chromosomes, and we represent this algebraically with the term 2n. And monoploid is the number of chromosomes found in reproductive cells. This is half of the normal number, and we represent this algebraically with the term n. So diploid is 2n, monoploid is 1n. So when we look at different organisms, and we look at their diploid and monoploid number, so beginning with the human, uh, in every human somatic cell, there's the diploid number 46 chromosomes. This comes from two gametes having the monoploid number of 23 combining together. So an elephant has a diploid number of 56, while its monoploid number is 28. An oak tree, somatic cells, regular body cells of an oak tree, will have 24 chromosomes, while the gametes of an oak tree will have 12. Carrots have a somatic number of diploid chromosomes, 18, while the monoploid number of a carrot is 9. And for a wolf, there are 78 chromosomes in its somatic cells. That is the diploid number. And the monoploid number for a wolf is 39, 39 chromosomes in its gametes. So as a reminder, when we looked at mitosis, the production of somatic cells through cell division, the diploid number is the starting point of the original cell that doubles and then splits so that each new cell created through mitosis has the same diploid number. So in the human that went from 46 to 92 back to 46. This is not going to be the case for meiosis. In meiosis we're going to start with that diploid number we're going to double the number of chromosomes and split to the diploid number, but then we're going to split a second time, giving us sperm and eggs that have the monoploid number. So we're going to go from 2n, basically to 4n, back to 2n, and then split again to n. Now notice in meiosis, because of this double split, we're going to end up with four new cells instead of two. So during meiosis, each original cell ends up producing four sperm. Each original cell of a female will end up producing four egg or ova. So as I said, we went from 46 split the first time back to 46, and then split a second time to 23. So the monoploid number of chromosomes in sperm and egg is 23 chromosomes. This will allow for the sperm and egg joining to form the zygote, and those two 23s create the 46 that became you or me. Again, a reminder about chromosomes. Chromosomes are made up of chromatids. Those chromatids are formed from coils of DNA. It is that DNA that is the genetic information that is the blueprint of who and what we are. 
The four chromatids are held together by a centromere. We are reminded that those chromosomes are housed in the nucleus of the cell. And again, those chromosomes are made up of coils and coils and coils of that DNA, deoxyribonucleic acid molecule, formed of nucleotides forming that twisted ladder called the double helix. So when we look at meiosis, meiosis actually takes place in two mitotic divisions. So just as with any cell cycle, you're going to begin with interphase. After interphase, you will have prophase 1, metaphase 1, anaphase 1, telophase 1. There will not be a cytokinesis because we're not actually going to split the cells. They're going to return to prophase 2, metaphase 2, anaphase 2, then telophase 2, and then the division of the cells will take place as we have four new gametes that have the monoploid number from the original cell. Now, key to survival through evolution, and when we talk about Darwin and the theory of evolution, we understand that variation is essential to competition and survival. So we need to guarantee forms of variation so that we're not getting the same exact genetic information in every offspring. One way we do this is by the process of segregation. When the cells divide through meiosis, each new sperm or each new egg can have a different recombination, a different combination of those chromosomes. This guarantees that when the sperm and egg rejoin through conception, we are going to guarantee that the offspring may have slight differences, enough differences that create genetic variation. The second way is called crossing over. Crossing over is called, it takes place during the first prophase of meiosis. In this case, we're going to guarantee genetic variation by the exchange of genetic information. So what happens is sometimes during prophase 1, the chromatids of the chromosome pairs become overlapped. They'll wrap around each other, and as they are pulled apart during the mitotic division, Sometimes, parts of one chromosome will end up on parts of another chromosome. So as you see here, we have the gray and orange chromosome and the green and blue chromosome, but when they are pulled apart, the blue ended up paired with the gray and the orange ended up paired with the light green. This crossing over then leads to when segregation occurs and the chromosomes are divided that you get further genetic variation. Now in summary, let's compare mitosis to meiosis. Mitosis makes somatic cells, the cells of the body. Meiosis makes gametes sperm and egg, the reproductive cells. In mitosis, there's only one cell division. In meiosis, we actually divide the cell twice. In mitosis, we produce diploid cells, cells that have the exact same chromosome number from the original cell. In meiosis, we produce monoploid cells, cells that have half of the original number of chromosomes from that first original cell. Mitosis produces two daughter cells. Meiosis produces four gametes, sperm or egg. Mitosis creates cells that are genetically identical, guaranteeing genetic continuity, structural continuity, and functional continuity. Meiosis guarantees genetic variation. Through segregation and crossing over, we get recombinations of the chromosomes, making for cells that have slight 
variations which are important and essential for evolution.